do this. An intensive therapy for autism at $60,000 a year. California is ready to pay, but are we? We ask a government minister about complaints that treatment here is dictated by money, not need. Now, a controversial treatment for autism called Applied Behavioral Analysis, ABA, is proving so successful in California that those in charge of the state's autism program believe every child should have access to it. That's not the case in Britain. Here, whether you do or do not get ABA seems to be another one of those postcode lotteries that we all loathe. Richard Watson reports from California on the promise of ABA and, as I'm sure you're going to guess, its enormous cost. Apple Valley, California, in the heart of the Mojave Desert. You walk out here, you don't see any street lights. You can see a lot of stars and stuff. But you don't hear anybody. It is a little different. I mean, colder in the winter and hotter in the summer. It's an everyday trip for glass fitter Robert Smith. I put glass in anything that moves and just about anywhere you see it. I mean, from like mirrors, shower doors, storefronts, cars. Uh, I've yet to do an airplane, but I have done a train. But his journey over the past 30 years has been something of a miracle. At the age of two, he was diagnosed with severe autism. Hi, Bobby. Hi, how are you? Can you come here? This is Robert, age three. He refuses to make eye contact, a key sign of autism. Come here, Bobby. Come here. He appears cut off from the outside world. Bobby. He's preoccupied with repetitive play, characteristic of autistic children, and he has no speech. This is the first time mother and son have seen these images of themselves. It's pretty crazy. But we made it. Back in those days, what, what problems did Robert have? What sort of problems? He would um, rock himself and then he would hit his head against the wall in his crib. He would kind of jump up and, and hit his head on the wall and just do that repeatedly. And then um, I began to hear that some children with autism would wear helmets, you know, to prevent, um, I guess, brain damage or whatever. But um, so I kept him out of the crib as much as I could at that point. And he had other behaviors. Um, um, moving his head back and forth with his hand in front of his face and making this croaking noise and... Repetitive behavior. Mm, oh, yeah. He would sit and do it and do it. I mean, I really don't remember hardly any of it. I mean, I remember a few people and a few things, but, I mean, it just, to me, it seemed like it was just like a place that I was going to go do things. I mean, it's almost like school, you know? So mm -hmm. it doesn't really register that much, and I don't remember feeling any different or anything like that, so I mean, it was just a stage in life, I guess. Do this. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking go, for. Go. Do this. Yeah! Go, 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 go. This is the therapy technique that cured Robert. It's now practiced across California. Lee is uh, yeah. teaching um, Luke to imitate nice. and perfect his imitation skills. She gives a cue, um, Luke responds, and then she provides positive reinforcement. Do this. Yeah, thank you. Tasks are broken okay. down into their simplest okay. components. Success is instantly good. rewarded with praise and other yeah, reinforcers, such as it? chips or a drink. It's known as Applied Behavioral Analysis, or ABA. Right. We've had a lot of success stories, and success ranges from um, children just learning to talk to children who are now in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade um, independently without any assistance. So they're in regular ed without help. The hills above Los Angeles are home to the man who pioneered ABA for autistic children. For 40 years, psychologist Dr. Ivar Lovas has been developing the approach at the University of California. We use imitation. That's a major learning strategy. 
half the kids learn to imitate vo vocal sounds and others do. So it's mama, papa, dada, and then mommy, mama, dada, daddy, and then slowly you make it more and more complicated. And it's sort of like a positive like accelerated curve. Take a long time to get the first sounds and imitation, and then it, they shoot up like this. And then they became imitative. So you could say, what's your name? And it doesn't say, Adam, Adam, good. In 1987, Lovas published research on a group of 19 children, mostly from around Los Angeles, who'd received 40 hours intensive ABA therapy. At the age of seven, 47% uh, of them were in, scored within the normal range on a, on a typical range it's called now, uh, on IQ tests, and were in first grade unassisted. We tested them again when they were 13 years of age as adolescents, and the, the, the best outcome group uh, maintained the gains, which surprised me a great deal. I thought they wouldn't, but of course it really meant that in those first years that we had them in treatment, they learned how to learn. Marty, touch your nose. Marty, touch your nose. Good boy. The ABA Marty. team at the University of California had to swim against the tide. Many of Lovas's rivals in the 1950s and 60s believed that autism was created by a cold mother-child relationship and as such was treatable with Freudian psychoanalysis. That's now discredited, but some researchers still argue against intensive ABA. Together this is the alternative, the classroom-based approach. Oh, good job. And Ivy. Ivy. Ivy and Jared from Los Angeles spend all day in class together with other autistic children. Get your spider. Itsy bitsy spider. A longtime rival of Lovas, Dr. Edward Ritvo, believes this is the best model. He says that 40 hours of intensive one-on-one -on -one therapy can actually be damaging. Children with autism need other things besides one-on-one -on -one relationships. They need to play. They need to be kids. They need social reinforcement. And I've seen, unfortunately, kids who have been placed in this treatment 40, 50 hours a week, day after day, week after week, and they lose out on the, the, the part of their personality that could develop and become more social. Now, Lovas says the technique is not effective unless you have something like 30 or 40 hours of intensive ABA per week. What do you say to that? With two, three hours a day, four or five times a week, <clears throat> we seem to reach the maximum effectiveness. There are no data to suggest that two or three hours a day is effective. The easy thing is to say, oh, no, your child needs to be, st be stressed now. We only need two hours a day or something, three hours a day. And then play with other kids. They don't learn anything by being with other kids. We know that for a fact. You put a kid in a normal class, and if he hasn't to know, learn the basic skills, he'll stay the same. Jared, Jared, can you put up the monkey? Yes. But ABA is not for everyone, and standards of treatment can vary. Jared's parents tried it at home with a team of therapists but their son made little progress. The things that you'd hope to see, such as increased eye contact, more self-awareness, decreased aggression, those are things we were not seeing. They were simply, he was simply almost non-responsive when it came to that treatment. Um, and truly, it was after we took the somewhat unusual step of, of, of wiring his room with video to watch the therapy clap that we were almost hands. aghast at what we saw. Jared, clap your hands. I don't like that. I don't like that. Clap your hands. <laughs> Jared cries as he fails and fails again to comply. Lovas's own data shows that a minority of children don't respond even to the best ABA, and much depends on the quality of the therapy. Stand up. You need to listen. Stand up. When I say stand up, you stand up. Dr. Lovas acknowledges that the majority of therapists fall short of his standards, and his critics argue that ABA is overused and overhyped. Despite all the controversy surrounding ABA, there is a growing body of evidence here in California that early intervention does actually work if it's intensive and early enough. 
But beyond the academic debate, the crucial question is what the state believes is the best way forward. Well, I've come to the state capital of Sacramento to meet the man in charge of the $1.8 billion budget for autism. California's Department of Developmental Services enjoys a big budget for disabilities guaranteed under state law. The state's most senior psychologist says that he's ready to embrace a radical new policy on ABA. ABA definitely works. Uh, it probably has more uh, science uh, behind it than any other approach. I think every child should be given the opportunity uh, to uh, find out whether or not that child uh, can respond to ABA. Uh, now, some children... Now, that's significant. That, that, that's a, a big financial resource. It, 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 it is, it is, it is, but we're looking at a lifetime of, d of developmental problems if the child does not receive it. The situation in California is very different from in Britain. Here, state politicians seem willing to back ABA despite the huge costs. And the costs will be vast because here there's an epidemic of autism. The numbers being diagnosed are up around 300% over the last decade. The crucial question is why? According to an official Californian study, the number of new autism cases diagnosed throughout the 1970s was consistently between 200 and 300 each year. But then the numbers began to climb sharply and continue to climb throughout the 1980s to a point where today more than 3,000 cases a year are being diagnosed. There are only two possible reasons for this. Either some unknown environmental trigger is creating a real increase or the rising numbers are a byproduct of better diagnosis. Instead of autistic kids slipping between the cracks, they're getting all the gravy now. So it's very advantageous to a family to have their kid labeled autistic rather than mentally retarded or emotionally disturbed because they get a nice teacher and they get ABA and they get all kinds of goodies from the school system because autism is well funded as a disease now, thank God. So you think that re-diagnosis, that re-categorization could account for 100% of this massive rise? Yes. Russell is one of 18,000 autistic children in California today. Who's the best? I am. You better believe it. Swimming is one of the few skills Russell has managed to learn since he was diagnosed autistic age two. You experience uh, clearly a feeling of death and remorse in your family when uh, you see someone that you love uh, more than life itself uh, disappear before your eyes. Like many parents, Rick Rollins is convinced that Russell was damaged by a series of vaccinations. He strongly rejects the idea that the epidemic of autism can be entirely explained by poor diagnosis in the past because, he says, numbers have continued to rise even over the past few years. Missing a child with the most severe cases of autism is like missing a train wreck. And for us to now think that somehow we have um, better identified a, a child who can't talk, who has repetitive behavior, who makes no eye contact, who uh, is uh, self-involved uh, self and in many, many cases self-abusive, uh, uh, just defies logic. Is it credible? that such a massive rise in numbers can be put down solely to changing diagnostic practice? I don't think it can. I think um, we would be foolish to attribute that rise simply uh, to uh, one single factor. I think it's a combination of factors and if we're intelligent, uh, and I think we are doing this the intelligent way, we're looking at all of those issues. If it is determined that an environmental link is there, we're going to see a lot more of this before we can correct that. Because we have been contributing things to the environment for many, many years, and I don't know that we could clean that up. A 10-year epidemiological study into possible links between autism and environmental pollutants, drugs, food additives, and vaccinations is now underway. Meanwhile, the caseload continues to swell. And with ABA, the treatment of choice, costing $50,000 per child per year, the budget for special needs is already stretched. If the child was not treated, then the child would be 
in an institutional setting when they protect the care for at least 40 years or maybe 50 years. The normal life expectancy these, these individuals have, just like the rest of us, uh, of 65 to 70 years. And that costs the state an average of $30,000 a year. And you multiply that with, with, with 50, and you're coming into millions of dollars. Back in the Mojave Desert, Robert Smith prepares for the night shift. He was one of nine children to completely overcome their autism in Dr. Lovis's 1970s research study. Now he makes $50,000 a year as a glazier, the same as a year's worth of ABA. Now California is ready to back ABA for every autistic child, at least for a trial. The hope is that many more, like Robert, will recover. Richard Watson reporting there from California. Well, earlier tonight I spoke to Baroness Ashton, the schools minister who's responsible for autistic children, and asked her whether she was persuaded of the usefulness of ABA treatment. 90% of local education authority has have some form of the LOVAS method operating within their areas. What we have across the autistic spectrum are children who respond to different kinds of treatment, to different kinds of support. What we have to do is investigate and look at the different kinds of treatment and make sure that when decisions are made with the families involved, that the most appropriate methods are found for the individual child. Sure, but do you accept uh, the principal in California, as uh, the person in charge there said, that every child should have the opportunity to receive ABA, and that's not true in Britain? Well, as I say, most of the local education authorities we have have got the ability to use some form of ABA if that's appropriate for the child concerned. What I wouldn't want to get into is a position where we say there's one method, it's appropriate for all children. Rather, we have to look at the individual needs. How worried are you that there is, in effect, what parents have told us is a postcode lottery operating here too. For instance, there are some parents in Swansea and Bristol who say uh, they run up into a brick wall at every turn and they're convinced it's because the local education authorities want to save money. Other parents born with elsewhere say we don't have a problem. I think for every education authority, they're working for the benefit of all the children in their area. They've got to look at all the different needs of the children and of course resources play a part in that. We don't want there to be any kind of postcode lottery. We believe that we should provide the best we can in the individual setting for the child in the local area. And our education authorities in the main do a fantastic job. Most parents are very satisfied. There are cases where it doesn't work, where things go wrong. And that's why we have support for parents, why we support the voluntary organisations that work with parents, and why we have a tribunal system. Uh, the, the tribunals, as I understand it, more than uh, gone up more than 200% the cases from parents who were annoyed at some part of the system, and 90% of them find in favour of the parents, which suggests that the early response which your guidelines want your guidelines say early response should enable early identification of need and timely intervention it's not working because the parents are having to go through the tribunal system to get that response one of the issues about children who are autistic is that we th we think it's about the age of five that children are generally identified and that's to do with a whole series of factors i'm a passionate advocate of the earliest possible identification for children to get the support in place so they get the best chance There's no question that's what we should do it's not that simple quite often for a number of our children and we've got to do more to do, to do some work on that. It's also about making sure that we have a system where parents feel that when they get to the tribunal that they have a real say. And if tribunals are finding in favour of parents, in a sense it's a good thing, just as it's a good thing that they're finding in favour of education authorities too. It's meant to be a system that takes a good, hard, independent look at something that's quite difficult to work out in a locality. So the tribunal system is important. It's important that parents feel that they're working with their education authorities and we know it's not perfect. You conceded that money obviously is a factor within the LEAs. I mean, we've heard from some parents that uh, they have been told if we grant this, if we give uh, ABA to your child, it could potentially open the floodgates. It could be too expensive. Huge costs, $50,000 a year. Well, the costs of ABA, I think, vary between about 7000 and 20000 depending on the system. It depends on what's pr being provided locally. It depends on how it's been done and who's providing it. All those factors play a part. I don't want education authorities, obviously, to be saying it's about opening the floodgates. I think it's about trying to make sensible decisions. And what we're looking at is developing a system that provides the best we can for many of the children who are on the autistic spectrum. That will be in a mainstream setting, in an ordinary school, where they can get the support. A lot of parents want that. A lot of parents have found that works. For some children, it would not work. Special schools are definitely the answer for them. We need to look at making sure we can support them. Obviously, you can't impose everything from the centre, but... Uh... Local authorities also can't do the research themselves. They need very strong guidance from you as to what works and what doesn't work. You will have a postcode lottery, though, unless you assert yourself and say, 
this treatment does work, we should fund it? Well, we always do research, and of course we work very closely with our colleagues in the Department of Health. The Department of Health and, and the Education Department have just produced joint guidance for uh, families on autism and to support teachers and so on. Um, and in fact, 11, 11 uh, local education authorities are working with Southampton University on looking at the LOVAS method and seeing what they can learn from it. But if the research suggests, as it does in California, that up to half those who go through this method go to normal schools and act like normal children of their age group, that suggests it does, does work. If you're convinced of that case, will you pay for it? If we were convinced of that, we'd have to look very carefully what that meant. And what I mean by that is that when you look at children on the autistic spectrum, as I say, it's a, it's a wide spectrum. It contains a number of different subgroups of children who have different particular needs. There are different ideas, there are different treatments, there are different ways of working that are proved effective for different groups of children. So I'd want to make sure we were providing the best that we possibly could for each group. Catherine Ashton, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Baroness Ashton.